There are two common religions today that claim the name Christian. I'm talking today about Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons. So they worship Jesus, but when you look closely at their beliefs about God and Jesus, you begin to find that the Jesus that they worship and the Christ that Christians worship, they're very different. So let's take a quick look at each one and see how their beliefs differ from the Bible. First, I gotta say that I did not grow up Mormon or Jehovah's Witness. I grew up Christian. And so these belief systems are just so different from my own and what I grew up with that I got really confused at different spots, especially with the Mormon belief system. So I apologize if I get something wrong. Jehovah's Witnesses believe that only the Father is God, and Jesus, the Son, is a lesser created God. So Jesus is a God, but he's not of the same substance as the Father, so he's not like God, God. One thing that you should know about Jehovah's Witnesses is that they have their own translation of the Bible. It's the New World Translation, or the NWT. What makes this translation unique and actually corrupt is that it either adds or subtracts words from the original Greek changing the original meaning, and usually in ways that benefit them theologically. But even by doing that, they still miss some stuff, and that stuff still undermines their own teachings, their own theology. So let's get an example. I'm going to focus on John 1, 3. In the most common translation, the NIV, it reads this way. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. So in other words, everything owes its existence to Jesus. Now let's take a look at the exact same verses in their Bible, in the New World Translation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. This one was in the beginning with God. All things came into existence through him, and apart from him, not even one thing came into existence. Do you see the difference? The New World Translation says that the word was a god. This is a poor translation of the Greek, which literally has the word the right before God. It says that Jesus was, or the word was, the God. I learned a very easy way to show Jehovah's Witnesses that Jesus is God. And all you need is their own translation, a pen, and a napkin. So. First, draw a box representing all things that exist. Then draw a line down the middle, making a divide. On the left, label it things that don't have a beginning. And on the right, label it things that have a beginning. Then ask the Jehovah's Witness what belongs in the box on the left. They would probably put God and they would be correct. What about on the right? Use the language of John 1, 3, all created things. So then draw an arrow to the box on the right saying that everything there is created through Jesus. So the box on the right represents everything that ever was, ever is, and ever will exist. And it all either fits into one box or the other. It can't be both boxes, and it can't be neither box. There aren't any other options. Your next question could be something like this. In which box does Jesus go in? Their first impulse would be to put Jesus in the box on the right, that Jesus was created. That is what they believe after all. But John 1, 3, even in their own Bible, doesn't allow that. Let's read it carefully. It says, apart from him, not even one thing came into existence. Not even one thing. Jehovah's Witnesses teach that Jesus came into existence. He was created. But unless Jesus created himself, which is not what they teach, not to mention that's just absurd, then their own Bible teaches that Jesus wasn't created. And if all of everything that exists, exists all thanks to Jesus, then that means Jesus must have existed before anything was created. In other words, the word could not have been created. So therefore, Jesus can't go into the box on the right, which only leaves one other option. Jesus had no beginning, just like God. So some will try to tell you that John 1 says that in the beginning actually means in a beginning, meaning that God created Jesus, which was like one beginning, and then there was another beginning where Jesus created everything. This is a good example of what I've talked about before, that is, eisegesis, which is reading something into the, into the text making it say something it doesn't actually say. There's simply nothing in this verse or heck the entire Bible that says that 
there were two beginnings in this kind of way. Next, let's talk about Mormonism. So again, let me reiterate that Mormon belief is so different from Orthodox Christian belief and from what I grew up with that I got confused on several points. So if you're confused too, I apologize. Also known by the name as the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Mormons also believe that Jesus the Son is a created being. So they take the language of God's Son much more literally. They believe that both the Father and the Son are flesh and bone. In fact, they say that God and Jesus are exalted men. They're humans that have become gods. Jesus inherited his godness from the Father. He wasn't God to begin with. Now to understand this, you have to understand that Mormons believe every human being existed spiritually before we got a body. Once we got a body, our memories of our spiritual and immortal existence were wiped. So, but they also believe in many, many gods. So this is the definition of polytheism. In fact, they believe in an infinite number of gods. So each god, being born of heavenly parents, had their start as a spirit, who then became a human on a planet, maybe a planet in this universe, maybe not, we don't know, who eventually made their way to earning their place as God, or as a God themselves. So every God had parents, who also had parents, who also had parents, and on and on, stretching into infinity. God the Father in their belief system was that way too. He was born of heavenly parents, became a man who lived on a planet somewhere, again, we don't know, maybe in our universe, maybe not, and then became God. So he had a wife called Heavenly Mother, whose name has been withheld from us, with whom he had Jesus, who was the firstborn son. So Mormons say Jesus' name, at first, when he was born, his name was Jehovah. After Jesus, the Father and the Heavenly Mother also gave birth to every human spirit, basically who are all the humans that have ever existed and have ever, ever will live on the earth. Got it? Good because there's more. Sometime after his spiritual birth, before becoming human, Jesus somehow progressed into deity or godhood and then created the universe. But he didn't do it ex nihilo, out of nothing. He was using pre-existing matter. Eventually, Jesus became a man. Like Christians, they believe that Jesus was born of a virgin. And Jesus came as the Messiah to save us from our sins and to give us life and happiness beyond mortality. In other words, eternal life and happiness in heaven as a God. One big difference is that for Mormons, the beauty and happiness of heaven is not being with God like it is with Christians, but being like him, meaning we are, we are a God and having our own planet to rule. But in Christian belief, Becoming like God doesn't mean that we become a God. It means that we have eternal life and God's moral character, among other things. But we, we do rule a planet, but it's this one, this planet, that will be renewed. We all rule it together. We don't each get our own planet to rule. Now you'll hear that we are saved through Jesus by the grace of God. What they mean by this is different from Christian teaching. Christians believe that grace is God's unearned favor. It's God doing something for us that we couldn't do on our own. God's salvation by grace and grace alone means that there is nothing we can do to earn our salvation. The only thing we can do to get saved from our sin and death is to put our trust in Jesus Christ and believe in him. And we can have certainty that we will be with God for eternity in heaven. We don't have to worry about that. Mormons, however, they, they don't believe that. What they mean by grace is more like, man, how kind and loving it is that God gave us the opportunity to earn our salvation. The burden of getting to heaven is still on us. In my conversations with Mormons, they've admitted to me that they still feel the burden of their sin on their shoulders. And they cannot feel secure that they'll be in heaven when they die. And they don't like that feeling. So I don't know about you, but I think Christians have a much better deal. So in conclusion, the differences between Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, and Christians runs deep. Much deeper than we have time for in this video. But I hope that you can see that when it comes to Jesus, 
We worship a very different Jesus. So if you're interested in learning more, I encourage you to learn directly from a Jehovah's Witness or a Mormon that comes to your door. Ask them questions, but you also have the internet. But as you learn, be smart and discerning and be ready to ask questions of your parents or other Christian leaders when you get confused and to help you understand the differences. And of course, be praying be praying for them to come to know the real, true Jesus Christ.